In this video, we're going to talk about the two sensors that measure radiation at our Equinet stations, the Apogee SP110 and the Apogee SQ110. At the end of this video, you should be able to know four things. One, what each sensor is and what they measure. Two, how to properly install them uh, on an Equinet station. Three, how to do any general maintenance on the sensors if you need to go out in the field. And four, how to wire each one to a CR1000 data logger. Both sensors consist of a cast acrylic diffuser or filter, photodiode, and signal processing circuitry mounted in an anodized aluminum housing. Both sensors output an analog voltage that is directly proportional to either the total shortwave radiation, the SP110, or a photosynthetic photo photon flux, the SQ110, under sunlight. The signal is directly proportional to radiation incident on a planar surface, where the radiation emits from all angles of a hemisphere. This analog voltage is then multiplied by the calibration coefficient located on the sensor to report the radiation value. The installation process for an SP110 and SQ110 are identical. First, you're going to remove the three flathead screws on the radiation plate. Once those screws are taken off, you're going to be able to pull the plate off the mounting stand. Flip the plate over, you'll see a black flathead screw that holds the sensor onto the mounting plate. Remove that screw and the sensor should come off the plate. Then with the new sensor, you're going to insert the screw through the bottom of the mounting plate and connect it to the sensor itself. Now the sensor is locked in place on the mounting plate. Afterwards, you're going to reset the plate on the stand and screw those three flathead screws in. The objective is to make sure that the sensor is level. You'll notice it by the bubble located on the mounting plate. If it isn't level, adjust the hex screws using a number four hex wrench until that bubble is in place. Once it's in place, you've installed it. Before you leave the site, please make sure to remove the green cap on top of the sensor. It's only there for protection and it won't give you any good values if you leave it on. So the only routine maintenance for a radiation sensor is to clean it. So if you're out there and you're doing other work, you can clean the sensor. Usually debris gets on the sensor head and it's a common cause for low readings. Now, there is, the sensor is domed. So while that dome head is designed for self-cleaning by rainfall, salt deposits may remain after evaporation. So to clean out the salt deposits, you want to use vinegar and soft cloth or Q-tip to clean that salt off the sensor. If that's taken care of and you just have dust and organic deposits, those can be cleaned with water. And it can't be stated enough, but do not use an abrasive clean cleaner on the lens. If you end up doing that, you could damage the sensor and the values could become faulty. All right, we're ready to wire our SP110 or SQ110. Each one has three cables, a red one, a black one, and a clear one. For both sensors, black and clear go into analog ground. I tend to put them together in, in the channels as you see here. The only difference is where the red cables go. For the SQ110, the red cable goes in channel A3, or the blue number three on the CR1000 data logger. The SP110, a little different, the red cables can go into the A4 channel, or the blue number four. So to review, the Apogee SP110 and SQ110 both measure radiation at 2 meters above the surface. The SP110 measures total solar radiation, while the SQ110 measures photosynthetically active radiation. Now, the major difference between the two is the wavelength at which the sensors measure radiation. The total solar radiation sensor is going to measure the entire spectrum, while the photosynthetically active radiation is going to measure a small subset of that spectrum. When installing one of these, if you have to, just follow these key steps. You're going to remove that, those flathead screws on the sensor plate, and then you're going to remove the plate from the stand, and if you turn it upside down, you'll, you'll unscrew a black screw from underneath, and that gets the sensor off the plate itself. And then when installing a new plate onto the sensor, uh, insert the black screw through the hole in the, in the plate on the bottom. Uh, that way the sensor then gets locked onto the plate. So when you set the plate back onto the sand, you're going to make sure that plate is level. Uh, if it's not level, use a hex wrench, a number four hex wrench on the hex screws to level it. You don't have to worry about uh, putting those flathead screws to use. 
and then you're going to run the cable through the cross arm before inserting it into the white enclosure box. And remember to remove that green cover from the sensor before leaving the site, otherwise you're going to get a bunch of radiation values that equal zero. Okay, here's the wiring diagram for the Apogee's SP110, SQ110. Three cables for each one, three wires for each one. The only difference is the red wire. For the SP110, the red wire is going to go into A4. For the SQ110, the red wire is going to go into A3. Black and clear, all of them go into analog ground. You can put them all into the same analog ground channel. We hope you enjoyed this video on both the Apogee SP110 and the Apogee SQ110. For more videos, visit climate.ncsu.edu.